All right, we're doing our first trip in my brand new Hummer EV. This is gonna be awesome. Um, we're going to the Overland Expo Pacific Northwest. I'm um, gonna go hang out with some good friends. It's gonna be a good time. Can't wait, we're getting on the road. Um, I'm gonna show you uh, how much charge I got here. So if you look here, we're at 100% charge and we're at 519 kilometers. Um, I don't know what that is in miles. I think it's like 328 miles roughly. So yeah, and then we could kind of keep track of our drive summary. It'll tell us uh, how much kilowatts per kilowatt hour, I guess we're using. In Ready? All right, I am trying out Super Cruise. This is a scary feeling. I feel like I'm gonna go into that semi-truck, but I'm gonna turn, it's gonna turn. Look at it. That is the scariest feeling I've ever had in a vehicle. It is literally driving itself. Autonomous driving is crazy. This is, I, I never experienced Super Cruise. This is awesome. Stopped at a charging station. Uh, we made it to Hope, BC. We had about 32% charge, um, pretty decent. We went over the pass and probably lost uh, roughly about 30, 32 kilometers of charge, which isn't bad considering it was a pretty steep hill we went up over the pass there. So, and you gain quite a bit coming back down the hill with the regeneration of the, with the motors generating electricity back into the battery, so that's not too bad. So, we're just at a faster, fast, super fast charging station. 213 kilowatts, that's the fastest I have had yet. That's pretty quick. Um, we got here, somebody was on the charger, we just had to wait cool thing about these super fast chargers is um we only had to wait about 10 minutes um the i think the charger said we're only here for like maybe 30 minutes to get to 80 percent which is not terribly bad um there's not too much around here i guess if we wanted to grab a bite to eat we'd have to walk a couple blocks over but uh it's kind of raining right now so we're gonna wait it out here and uh get a charge We had a great stay at our hotel last night. Um, good sleep. One thing about the hotel was I thought, ah, oh, great, it's got a charger. I'll uh, charge the truck here. Well, the problem with it is uh, it's great they got a charger. The charger only charges at 6.6 .6 kilowatts. So it would have taken like 20 hours to charge to 80% or something like that. So, I mean, yeah, it'd be nice to plug it in and kind of maintain it, but it wasn't gonna charge it. so. Basically what we end up doing is we're gonna go this morning and go hit a ultra fast charger, which will probably take about 30 to 30 minutes to 45 minutes to get to 80%. So that's not too bad. We made a decision we're gonna get some breakfast, have some breakfast, let the truck charge, and then get on a road trip. Truck looks good. At our first charging station here on the second day of our trip, we're at a fast charger or a hyper fast uh, Electrify America. Yeah, this one is 350 kilowatt an hour. We're at 37 percent, and I believe it said 26 minutes to charge. Right now, we're charging at 243 kilowatts. Be pretty fast. Uh, about it says 28 minutes. We're gonna go to 100% because we're going over a mountain pass, so we wanna use all we can here. Um, so probably I would say 45 minutes. Once it gets past 80, it takes, takes it ramps to, charging down takes quite a bit. Charger's hooked up. Truck's looking good, looks good with the wheels. 100%, um, $61, now that's US dollars, so. We were here 74 minutes. Um, it was pretty fast up to 80%, and then of course, like I said, it slows down. So, no, that's not too bad. We're on to uh, the rest of our trip here. We're going uh, over another mountain pass, so that's why I did, like I said, I did 100% there. So, uh, I, don't, I don't know the name of the mountain pass. Um, but anyways, we're on our way to, I'm gonna say this wrong, but I'm gonna try, Yakima, Washington, like the bike rack. Yeah. We stopped and got some lunch. And we're doing another charge here on another 
ultra fat hypercharge they call it i still don't get the names of all these but anyways yeah so same about the same time as we charged this morning it's probably going to be about 45 minutes it was like 28 minutes to 80 percent and then we're going to do the 100 percent because we're going on a longer stretch this next run and then i think we're going to be at a slower charger part way through so that's going to add more time but this is all what you got to figure out when you're driving ev I love the charge indicator on the on the front. Made it to Revan, Oregon. I was pushing it. Um, definitely was a bit of a stretch to get here. We were all the way down to 9%. Yeah, that's a bit scary, but hey, we made it. You see? Boy, oh, the glare is pretty bad on here. It's charging now. 249 kilowatts or 10% already. Whew. Yeah, so basically the Google nav navigation was actually pretty spot on the whole way I was watching it and watching the percentages go up and the, you know how far we had left and it was spot on. So I was pretty amazed by that. Definitely pushed it a little far this time, um, but we made it. We're here in Redmond and we're ready to go to the Overland Expo and meet everybody, see everybody, and it's going to be a great time. Yep, there's a lot of people lined up already. This show was so big. All right, I'm all checked in, ready to go. Got my pass, a swag bag, and we're ready to get in there and have some fun. All right, starting the day off here at the Overland Expo. Gonna check out some uh, vendors, meet some people, and uh, have a great day. Nice thing today, it's a bit overcast. I may not need this hat today, but uh, yeah, it should be a great day. All right, pretty awesome to check out the new Ineo Grenadier. Haven't seen one yet in person. It's pretty cool to see it. Just got a pass here for a magazine. It's online and it's print. Uh, tell you right now, if you don't support magazines, if you don't go out and check them out, they're going to disappear like most of them have. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All the little batteries lined up. Oh, that brought us. <laughs> Making a quick stop at the Onyx booth. How's it going? Tell us a little bit about the app. Yeah, so this app, we focus on trail data. Um, our top, top of the line subscription level is going to give you uh, private land boundaries. Uh, it'll give you elite deals in the industry. Um, and then just a lot of awesome featured trails that we have trail guides. I'm a trail guide. So I, I'm from BC, so I do a lot of trails up there. So awesome. I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, definitely the... Uh, um, the discounts that you get are pretty good like they're really good actually so but there's a lot of good features like you can find trails find maps and you can see how good the trails are by looking at the pictures and you know seeing the trail ratings and it's it's pretty awesome map so check it out and i do have a link down in the description for um affiliate link so if you can check that out and uh subscribe that'd be awesome thank you Checking out the Epic Family Road Trips uh, rig here. Man, it's pretty awesome. And what makes it even more awesome is, check this out. <laughs> I got my sticker on their door. I met them yesterday, it was super nice. Um, yeah, definitely really cool to meet up with them and uh, have a bit of a chat. And yeah, I can check out some other rigs here. This is one big rig. Wow, this thing is huge. This is definitely your expedition vehicle, man. That'd be so fun to go out in this thing. It's always cool to check out Rob's truck and see what he's done next. He's got this new alley cab on here. That thing is sick, I love these.
Oh man, that's just the funniest part. Checking out uh, Ozark Overland Adventures' uh, new rig here and uh, check out what they got on the back of it. <laughs> I love it, that's awesome. Oh man, you need smell of vision that smells so good. Had to stop and check out this rig. This thing is awesome. Love that color. Wheels look awesome too. Checking out Trail Recon's Jeep. Man, I love this exhaust. The exhaust is so awesome. I love the look, the military inspired look of the exhaust. So this, uh, this tent is a cool top and it's got ventilation so it lets the air in and out and it keeps it cool on a hot day. I was in this tent yesterday and it, it was nice, it was really nice. Um, it's also got the screen mesh on the sides which is already in the tent once you pop it up which is pretty cool. It's got walls that come down if it's raining. Um, that's pretty awesome, I really like that, that'd be great for camping. Wow, this truck is a beast. Check this out. Man. Wheels look good. That is one good looking truck. That is a huge camper on it. There's so much room in here. It's like an apartment. It is so cool. Wow. I don't know if I can get it all on video here, but it's got fridge, cooktop, yeah. It's got a bathroom back here, like a full-size bathroom, wow. That is one amazing build. <laughs> all right, I'm here at Milestar Tires. This one here is a hybrid tire, kind of cross between a mud and all train. I really like the looks of it. It looks like it'd be really good in the snow. This one looks like it'd be a good snow tire too. This is their all-terrain. I wish they made this in my size. They don't make it yet. Definitely, um, definitely think I might try to set these tires out and uh, see how they do. Cool. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, I'm here with Adiona Alert. So what we're doing is we're using the location update that your Garmin InReach or your Zolio provides. We'll be supporting Vivi Stick in the next few weeks. Okay. We use that location. At the same time, we monitor over 300 public safety agencies in Canada and the U.S. Oh, nice. Safety alerts the issue. National Weather Service issues a severe thunderstorm, baseball size hail, flash flooding, tornado alert. Right. Uh, down to the county level, they issue a wildfire evacuation, an active shooter, uh, dangerous uh, animal from a bear attack alert. Oh, wow. What we do is we take that alert and we push it directly on your device. No cell service required. Um, it doesn't matter where you are as long as it has a clear view of the sky. We get a location, we match that location, we make sure you're in or out of harm's way and we give you the information you need. That's awesome. That way, this device, which you used to only use to ask for a helicopter to get you out of trouble. Right. Now, I'm gonna tell you a couple hours ahead of time to get out of the way or change your plan so you right. don't need the helicopter. That's... Everybody loves a helicopter ride, <laughs> but those not are that kind. Yeah, and they're not on your terms either, right? No, 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 no. So I'd rather I'd rather go to the airport and, or yeah. find a good place and go to with a normal plan. Flight. Right. Yes. No. That's that's cool. Now, what, how much is the service a month? So right now um, we're offering a twenty five percent discount. Um, it's eight dollars a month or seventy dollars a year. Okay, that's not bad. Seventy dollars a year is not that bad at all. It, it all depends on your use, right? Some users yeah. are out there a couple of months a year for that's one true. particular season. Yeah, they have the ability to turn it on and off as they need. You want right. it for a month for the hunt in the fall, and a oh, couple of okay. months for backcountry skiing. Yeah, yeah, it works. Okay. For others, 
you're keeping your device active year round, you're out there four, five, six months a year, $70 yeah. is a no-brainer. You're spending awesome. more money on that, uh, on your subscription. That's So well, yeah. it all depends what your needs and your... Yeah, yeah, I get that. Because I do the same thing with my Zolio. I turn it off in the winter. Sometimes I don't, I'm not out, yeah, you know, yeah. so... And that makes sense. So whatever works for you, um, there's lots of options with both Zolio and Garmin. Sweet. And we just wanted to offer the kind of, that kind of flexibility to our That's users. great. That's awesome. Well, I uh, I appreciate you uh, chatting with me. I thanks for coming. I really appreciate yeah. the visit. Sweet. And if there's anything we can do for you or your viewers, uh, reach out to us through our website. Okay, and I'll put the link down in the description below. So if you guys want to get a subscription, definitely uh, check them out. Awesome. Thank you. Yep, Marco is running Mall Star Tars. Check it out. Oh, Woo, the sun is back out here. It is getting hot again. Good thing I got my big hat. I almost took it back to the truck. But I am so glad I got some head shade. <laughs> All right, we're going to check out uh, Epic's live stream here in a few minutes. If you look behind me, you will see a lot of people that we have a lot of dirt on. That's why they're here. They don't have a choice or they'll be canceled. What is going to be his next build after? challenge he's in. Oh man, that's a complicated answer. I don't know what my next build is going to be. I have a few things on the docket that people are like angrily writing me to get turned on. So it depends on who's the most angry to decide which project I do. <laughs> we, should, we should have asked, what's the next project you're going to start that you're not going to finish? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, finish. Camping gear at home that's been lying around since, you know, you're a Boy Scout forever. Just go. And no matter what you're doing, it's, there are plenty of places that a phone stock rig can go, sleep in a tent, whatever. Figure out, figure out your, your needs as you go. So many people lose sight of the fact that you know, none of us started with massively built rigs and rooftop tents and all the gadgets and stuff. We spend way more time in our rigs and out on our trail than most people do. Which is why, you know, we've got the gear that we have because we're legit living out of our rigs for longer periods of time. Most people who are going after weekends don't <laughs> All right, so we're on our way back from the uh, Overland Expo, Pacific Northwest. Um, we stopped this morning, probably about 40 minutes outside of Redmond to uh, charge the truck up, just a quick charge. Um, we're back at the Walmart we were before, and we're getting another charge. Um, there is a downside to EVs is sometimes the charges are all full. When we got here, it was all full. We had to wait uh, probably about 10 minutes, which really wasn't that bad. Um, but usually these things are pretty quick charging, so usually people are on and off pretty fast. Um, another thing I've heard is when there's multiple cars plugged in in the charging stations that you get a slower charge rate. We're actually, I just looked at it, it was right 200, I think we were at 300 when I first. So let's see what we're at for charging rate. So we're at 211 kilowatts, that's pretty good. That's, that's about what we've been getting. Uh, 26 minutes. So that's pretty good. Um, that's not bad at all. So we'll wait here, have a bit of a snack, and take a bit of a rest, and then we'll be back on the road. All right, so last night we tried out the um, charger at the hotel. Normally those chargers don't do very well. This one's a seven kilowatt one. Um, but told by a couple of people, hey, just try it and see you know, how it works. So we were at 80% last night and it charged to 100% about five o'clock in the morning. I must have put it on nine o'clock last night, eight o'clock, somewhere around there. I can't remember the exact time, but not too bad considering. Yeah, just a small seven kilowatt an hour charger. Nothing too big. So the cool thing is, um, 
I checked it this morning when I unplugged it and it said zero dollars. So the app's kind of quirky to use, but um, must have charged me a two dollar service fee or something, but that's it. Two bucks to charge from 80% to uh, 100%, so basically 20%. But yeah, you can see here, I'll show you on the dash. We're at 100% and we're at 301 miles of range. I'd say that's pretty good for the bigger truck as it is. And we were driving, sometimes we're at 70 mile an hour, 65, somewhere around there, it just depends. Um, we had a bit of wind yesterday, so the, we were in like a desert kind of plain area. And the wind, we had a hard crosswind and a hard headwind at times. So that definitely affects the range because it's just a huge drag on the truck, right? But uh, yeah, it's been great. Um, we're going to get back on the road here and uh, truck's been awesome. All right, we're stop one last stop for a charge on our last leg here before we get home. And uh, we pulled into a charger that said it was a fast charge uh, at a Petrocan. And then um, once we hooked up to it, it said it was 200 kilowatts and it was only putting out like 88 kilowatts. So it said like three hours of charge. And I was like, no, we, we can't do that. We're trying to get home. So we went back to the first charger that we we hooked into on this video, actually. So it's a hypercharger, so it's definitely charging a lot faster. Um, we can take a look here at the charging rate. I love the lights. The lights are cool. So anyways, um, yeah, let's take a look and see where our charging rate is. 168 kilowatts, 16 minutes left to 80%. I think we'll at least get 90%, if not more, in this to, uh, it's a big climb up the hill here. Um, it'll use a lot of energy, so, yep, we'll be home before we know it.